Hello and how are you? My name is Mohindo Mubarak and I will come you uh, to our to what? To our 18th uh, if not 17th, I think 18th lecture of creating a complete inventory management system. So we always do 40 minutes so I'll start our timer. Uh, in the previous lecture we stopped at a place where we had started creating an API and uh, we had uh, got introduced to Postman, we were able to create the login logic, all those stuff, and even be able to register, all those things we were able to do them. So in this lecture, we're going to start from there and do what and proceed with the next steps. So without wasting much time, let's go ahead and get started. So as you can see, I have already launched my Visual Studio code. So I'll go ahead and I've already put there the project. So I'll go ahead and uh, start serving this project. So I'll go ahead and click on, uh, um, I'll expand my terminal. And then after expanding my terminal, I'll go ahead and do it and run PHP Artisan Serve. So PHP Artisan Serve. So my project will start serving. Right now, if I come here on the, in the postman and I try to log in, uh, you can see it is logging me in uh, successfully. The data can go and I can get the pretty data that shows that everything was successful. So in the previous lecture, we stopped at a uh, we we start we we let me log into the project as well. So I'll go ahead and go to what to task is uh, sorry. <laughs> I'll go to inverter track. Yeah, that which is there. I'll go ahead and log in as what as uh, company company one admin i hope the password is 4321 one two three four oh my god that was the password one two three four five i have even forgotten the password I think we shall need to add the logic of forgetting password. All right, so I've got the database straight, and then I'll go to inverter track. Sorry about that. And I'll go to users and main users. This is this one. I can see I have different kind of users. Let me go to the company one, which is uh, this one. Company two, admin. And then password one two three four uh four three two one yeah it is four three two one all right so that is our what our dashboard so previously we start in our api we started uh sorry not this one in our api we started creating the login the registration we started uh, uh, the we finished the crude of uh of what of financial a financial financial what financial periods uh how we finish also the crude of the employees we also finish the crude of the stock category so it means that uh, we can now proceed from there so we can use our project to guide us so we finished this crude of financial periods we finished the employees we finished stock categories i hope okay I, I think we finish doing store categories. You see, we have create, edit, and listing. So uh, maybe we need to put deleting. Uh, maybe that one can be done later. Uh, so after that, we're going to put now what? Um, uh, yeah, let's put deleting. Okay. Let's put deleting. Okay. I think we have not been putting deleting, which can be. A challenging okay let's put the deleting at last at very last all right so let's proceed with the um, so category finished so stock subcategories let's go ahead and do the stop sub stock subcategories and uh, logic okay so stock subcategories is going to be much more like stock categories so i can just duplicate this one so i'll just simply go ahead and duplicate this and then i'll go ahead and rename this one as what as stock subcategories okay so the create stock subcategory so instead of sending here the mode of stock subcategory of, of stock category so i'm going to go ahead and send the model 
I'm going to go ahead and send the stock subcategory uh, model. So I'll come here and then I'll come to models. Do you have the stock subcategory? Stock subcategory model is here. So I'm just going to copy this stock subcategory model. After copying it, I'll go ahead and uh, add it here. Okay. So after doing that, let's go ahead and now uh, see what you're going to include in the body. Okay. So here we're on the create, okay? Create of the stock subcategory. So that again to include in the body. So I'll first go to the database and see what is in the stock subcategory table. So I'll come here to stock subcategory table. And then I'll go ahead and copy these uh, what these columns of this stock, stock subcategory. Okay, so I can just come and first paste them here. I just create a new file and paste them there. Okay, so let's go ahead and add there one by one. So I'll go ahead and uh, change this one to bulk edit. You see, you can even change to bulk edit from here. Switch. Okay, so let me change to bulk edit. I'll just copy all of them and then paste them here. So let me remove all of this one and I paste them, the, the, the table columns here. So I'm going to remove the one that we don't need and then uh, leave the one that we need by just dummy. So I'll come here. ID, we don't need it to be generated by the what? By the by the by the it will be generated by the what? By the um, to be generated by the system. So created at we don't need it to be generated by the system. I remove also updated at company ID. Uh, this one can also be maybe uh, generated by the system, but uh, for now let us submit it. So let us see on the store categories where we adding company ID. So I think we're adding it. No, I think that logic has is already being done uh, from what from the model itself. Let's see the stock subcategory. Uh, I think we shall need to send it okay so company id so i'll come here to stock subcategory where it is it is here company id okay so we need company id so company id how can we get it uh we can get of course from the someone who is logged in so it's a stock subcategory here right so let's go ahead and get the company id so uh in our variables do you have company id I'm not sure let's go ahead and check in our environment our event track uh, variables we don't have company ID uh, we can add it because it can also be changing so let us go ahead and add company ID so company ID we can uh, see in uh, from our database uh, on the table of users on user who has ID number 10 in my case here I want to see his company ID so I'll come here to admin users and look for uh, for a user who had ID 10 here and then then I can get his company ID. I think it is this one. Okay, this one here. So user number 10, his company ID is 7. So for now, let me put there 7. Okay, so let's go ahead and substitute this 7 in our variable. So this is the environment. I've just put 7 there. And then I'll come back here to our create variable and then I can switch back to models. So I'll come here where there's company ID and I substitute there the company ID like this. Okay, so it will be substituted there. Let me go back to bulk edit. Okay, I'll come here to stock category. So the parent category of this stock, it must also be added. So I can come here and cheat. Um, I can get here the stock categories just for the matter of testing. I can get the stock categories and I look for the stock category whose company ID is 7. Okay, so I can see here I have many stock categories which have company ID 7. For example, I can pick this 4. So it's going to be the parent category we are demonstrating. So it's B4. So the name of this subcategory, I can say maybe test sub category like this. So after I can go ahead and get the description of this category. So I can say maybe some details about this sub category. 
I have a status I can set it to be active uh, I think status we are having active or not active so I can make this one active okay I have the image I can leave this image for now uh, we shall work on this logic later mm, the image you need to work on this logic of images uh, yeah I think we're going to work on that logic of images okay um yeah we're going to talk on this logic of images but let's first leave it for now i'm going to come back for it okay so buying price i can put uh maybe a buying price this will be set by the system of the store category and then selling price will be set by the system and also expected profit it will be set by the system and uh and profit so all these ones may be measuring unit uh we shall maybe put kgs and then current quantity to be generated by the system reorder level i can say maybe 10 and then in stock this one will also be generated by the system so those are the fields that we need and accord, according as far as my my mind is my my understanding is concerned so these are the fields that we need in order to do what to create a what uh, store category so let's go ahead and, and submit so you can click a submit and I click on submit uh, I can see stock subcategory created successfully you can see the test stock, stock subcategory has been created successfully and it is not in stock so right now let's go ahead and uh, do what let's go ahead and uh, and see if it was really uploaded I mean let's go ahead and see if it was uh, really added to the stock at subcategory table so if I come here to stock subcategory table here you can see that um, you can see that uh, what let's refresh you can see that the stock subcategory it has been created here the only thing the image was not uploaded all right so I'm going now to show you how we upload images okay i'm going to show you how we upload images and then we learn once and for all so i uh, let's face it let's face it so when you create stock subcategory you should be able maybe to add even the image something like that uh okay so to do this i'm going to go ahead and create a separate a separate what a separate uh, a separate I'm going to go, I'm going to go ahead and create a separate uh, model that I'm going to use. I mean, I'm going to create I'm going to create a separate endpoint that we're going to use for file uploading. So we can use that one for practicing, and then after we come and implement it here in other things or in other uploads. So let's do that. Um, let's begin. Let's begin. So I'll come here uh, to let me uh, close everything first. Close all. Okay. So let me come here and create a new uh, folder for file upload. Okay. So I can create a folder maybe for maybe I can call it common or others. So I'm going to put here the logic for uploading an image. So I can come here and say maybe file uploading. So I can say image uploading. All right. So of course the image must accept the post. So I can just simply put here post. And then I'm going to put our endpoint. So how say it's going to be an endpoint. So this going it's not going to be an API. We can make it something separate. I can call it maybe file uploading. That's going to be our endpoint for uploading image. Uh -huh. So uh, this endpoint it will be accepting one image per time for now. However, you can do the logic of uploading even multiple images. So in the body, I'm going to go ahead and put form data. So uh, here, what we do, we put what we call a uh, file name. 
okay file name i mean uh the, the, the file name the key the key name okay so i can go ahead and put here maybe a uh, photo and then here i change the type to file so you change the type here to file then you'll be able to select a file so to select a file i can just simply come here say new from the local machine then let me come here and just select some uh, random file let me say this file all right let me say this file okay i select it all right so this endpoint of course it's not existing for now okay so let's go ahead and create it so if i try to send of course it's going to send me an error that this endpoint did not exist you see not found so let's just put here maybe how i should accept json so if i try to submit we'll see the error is file uploading api stroke file uploading is not found so let's go back and now uh, start creating this logic of uploading image so i'll come here to our api route okay so i'm going to create a uh, the logic for image uploading okay so let's go ahead and uh, just come here i'll just duplicate one of these guys i'll just put here image uploading file uploading and then i change this method to post then i can come to this api controller and i go ahead and create a method that is going to handle the image uploading like this so let me go ahead and call this and file uploading so i'll come here and put file uploading so in this file uploading i'm going to put here die and say maybe time to upload file like this so when i save like this at least i should be able to see that it is drawing this and show that it's time to upload file so let's go ahead and try and send the request you'll see a few arguments okay what are they saying what are they saying uh they're saying okay what is the error the error is saying too few arguments passed to file uploading all right let's see uh file uploading it is here it is post uh okay okay sorry i have to remove this model maybe i can keep only the request that's not that comes so everything is it time to upload file so we are going to work on the logic of uploading file uh so we are just going to upload file using like uh, normal php so let us first see our file are being uploaded in the folder of image in the folder of image stroke uh they are being uploaded in the folder of images stroke what stroke this so i mean in the folder of storage stroke images so our folder of storage where is it let's first determine where our folder of storage is so our folder of storage is here in public storage then images that is where our images are being uploaded so i'm going to work on the logic uh to make sure that i can get this path of or the, this destination of where the images are so to do that i'll first uh, get what you call the root okay so the base or the the, the, the root something like that so to get the root All right so you can see here laravel is making it simple so uh so i just simply get the file that is being uploaded so you can see the file that is being uploaded it is this one it's called photo okay it's called photo all right so after getting the photo i go ahead and check if it is not null so if it is null i can i can go ahead and say 
the folder does not exist so i send back the error file is is required okay so this is how we get it and then if there's not if it if it if it is already there i'll go ahead and get the file name so this file name should be random so i just simply say file name equals to time and then i put underscore so this time is going to be like a timestamp and then i get the file what the file original path like this so just write file client origin like this original name so it will get the original name of what of the file and then concatenate it there however uh, the original name can have uh, can have what can have spaces can have uh, uh, something like that can have spaces okay so let me just get the extension So this is how you get the extension. This is how you get the file extension. Okay. So after getting the file extension, so file name is got time. Then I concatenate there the file extension. You see, I get this time. Maybe I can also add some random uh, between maybe a one thousand and one hundred. I mean between like one thousand and ten thousand, and then I add there this dot. Okay, so you make sure that you add there the dot so the extension can can be added. So I'm getting um, sorry. Let me explain this properly. So here I get the file extension after checking that it is not null. After getting the file extension, I make sure that it is not null. Okay, and then after I get the file what uh, the time. Okay, I get the time. Okay, so after getting the time. To make sure that it is unique, I concatenate there some random values, okay. And then after I concatenate the full stop, so it can have the dot, and then I concatenate there the, the extension. And then after I call this Laravel method of file move, and then I say public path, and then I say uploads. So I mean, instead of putting uploads here, our files you can see they are being moved in what in uh, storage stroke images. So I have to put here storage stroke images like that so that the file can come here in the images folder like this okay so that's how it's uh, just a public path then you pass storage stroke email images then here the second parameter you pass now the file name like this so after it is successful uh we send back the what uh the file so maybe you can say maybe now the url equals so it equals so i remove the storage because you can see now database the storage is not there so equals maybe storage and then i concatenate there the file name okay so that will be our url and then we just say success and then we pass the url so you can pause this video i mean you can pause this and see how i've just designed this a uh, function and then file will be uploaded successfully so now i upload you see our images they are file uploaded successfully under images then stroke this so if you come here to public and then you come to images we should be able to see it it is not there let's try to delete this okay public stroke images stroke storage stroke images i hope i'm writing the images properly let's try to move it again it's showing success but it's not going there let me try to see if it is where it is going it is not uploading it all right let's see what could be the issue Let me first get the public path. Let me first die with public path and I see how it looks like. So it is there. Stroke public. Okay. Let's add their storage. So, stroke. so I have to, oh, sorry, I think I have to add here storage like this. So you see. 
this is where the image is supposed to go inventor track stroke public stroke storage stroke images all right so that's where it's supposed to go now let's go ahead and uh, sorry so i'll just come and say i add this here okay let's make sure that everything is okay so that is the path Vedor track web stroke public stroke storage stroke images all right now let's go ahead and try to add it there so i'll first remove this i'll just remove this let's say file move from this i mean to this destination okay and then i say it should have this file name okay then this save successful let me call this and I think it was it really went there. Why it's not going there? If I put the uploads uploads going there i think this storage uh i put storage only this storage is under git ignore i think it is going there it is going there but you see it is coming eh? but i'm not seeing it because it is under git ignore yeah it has been going there has been going there let's observe here let's just come here to let me reveal this one and find her so if you come to images you see it has been going there only that it is under git ignore that's why i wasn't able to see it so let's try to zoom you can see the images there it has been going only that i was not seeing it let me delete all the images okay let's try to upload again so we want it to go we want it to go to storage stroke images okay that's where we want to go okay like this so you can pause the video and see that so if i try to upload let's try to upload send successful so you can see it is uh, here you see it is this one so it is uploading successfully so make sure that uh, it is uploading okay so you can pause the video and see uh so i'm going to make my what i'm going to make my my i'm going to make my function my my, my function that i'll just be giving a file and then it works that logic of uploading so i just don't worry about these things again and again okay so let's do that in utils so let us go to utils and just create maybe file upload okay so just simply come and put here public static function file upload okay it will be receiving a file okay then it will have this logic just laravel i mean copilot has done it for me so if it is error it will throw a uh, file is required if it is not if it if everything is okay it will go ahead and upload and then return me the what the url okay so if it is an error i can just return just an empty string okay I mean if it does not exist return an empty string like this so this is a file upload a static function that i'll be using for file uploading so if i want to upload the file i'll just simply go and call utils and say uh so let me first check if it is it is like let me just call utils so i can just say path 
equals to utils upload file and and I, and I just pass this file so i can check if if it is null i mean if SRL empty is empty if this if the path is empty i just say file not uploaded if it is successful i just send back the path as success let's try this method send file not uploaded mm -hmm. so suppose here our file name is photo you see our file name is photo All right so I have put here photo so try to send you see file uploaded successfully so you can see here our file has uploaded successfully and if you come to your uploads you'll find there so we'll be just using this method um we'll be using this method uh to upload uh photos something like that all right uh yeah let's do that so i'm going to add this logic in our in our update and setting logic okay so let's go ahead and do that i will come here to our api so this is just an independent for uploading photos separately so you can see it is working properly so let's go ahead and add this kind of logic in our what in our api so as i told you you can do it in your own way but for me i am just sharing you my with you my techniques that uh, can make your life really really simple so i'm going to add these two on the on create and also on the what on update so let's come here to on create here on creating so here before saving before saving you are going to check uh so we're going to check uh if uh uh you are going to check if there is something called photo or can say maybe image field image field okay so can say maybe temp image field or something like that something that is unique that you cannot use so we'll be checking if this is set then you shall know that hey someone wants to upload the what a file okay so it will be a unique field and then we'll be just dynamically using it to upload a what a file so this file this unique field will be using it to dynamically send the name where the file that has been uploaded should be saved okay so let's go ahead and you can call it something that is very uh unique that you'll not use anywhere so let us call it temp image file okay or te temp image field something like that so what i'm going to do i'm going to check if it's set if 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 temp image field is set then i know that someone wants to do it to upload a file so let's go ahead and do that so i can say if check if it's set so i can say if temp image field is set you see i check if it is set in the request at the same time i check if it is having uh, some string okay if strlen of that temp image field is more than maybe let's say maybe like two at least okay then we can know that okay someone wants to upload the what uh, a, a, a file so let's go ahead and now check if the file is there so we'll first check if this temporary field is is image field is not empty at the same time we're again checking if it is not uh if it is having a string greater than zero then we shall know okay someone is sending what an image okay or you can call it file fields since you may need to use this for the file even something like that so to be like kind of very uh independent so so after doing this too we we'll make sure that it is having a string more than than one and then at the same time it is uh not null then we shall check another again and see if there if, uh, if there is a photo that has been sent so how do you check the photo that has been sent we shall use this logic okay this logic so we just simply say if if so I can say maybe a uh, file equals equals to that then i check if this file is not null because we have to check everything if this file is not null then i go ahead 
and uh, upload this file so if it is not null or the file of photo i go ahead and upload the file of photo so after i check so i may need to surround this one by so by default i may make this path to be empty okay so i go ahead and check if i may need to surround this and try and catch because some errors can happen and then mess up with everything so try and catch okay and catch so if it is if it is fails i reset it back to what zero then after so try cache like this okay so i go ahead and check if str len str len of this path of the image file is more than three at least an image should be having a, a three more than three length of course so i'll go ahead and add there the photo okay on the object that is being uploaded you see i'm adding this photo on the object before it is being saved okay so uh however i don't know what is the name of the photo so this is why i needed this what you call temporary file field okay so in lit in simple terms in this temporary file field will be just change sending the name of this photo of the photo that is being uploaded or the the, the, the name of the field that is being uploaded where the image should be saved on the database so i can say maybe uh now the name of this field so i can say maybe field field name equals to this temporary photo so i go ahead and put this field name here like this so i put with a dollar sign remember so that the name as it was sent it should be substituted here then i reset this one as well okay i unset it okay i think he already we already skipped it if it was there so that is it like this so it means that this field name will be substituted here if it is there and then the path will come and be added on this object if these all are successful let me just repeat it again so here we shall be sending the file name according to this dynamic logic we shall be sending the field name okay and then we go ahead and send and make sure that this field name is not null so it makes sure that it's set and it's having maybe a string that is more than one or to make sure that it's not empty then if it's not empty i go ahead and check if the file of photo was sent by getting the file of photo and then i check if the form or oh, the file photo was really added in the form by checking if it is not null if it was not if it is not null i go ahead and reset maybe the path of this image or this photo or this file to be nothing and then after i i try and upload that photo is our timer still there yeah we have two minutes i go ahead and upload this photo so after successful uploading i go ahead and check if this photo is having a string more than two if so it has more than two i get the field that was sent to us where the photo should be saved on the database i put it here and then i get the object that is about to be saved here and i attach there the field name and attach there the photo that has been uploaded so by doing like this the photo will be uploaded let's try it so you can see i've put this method inside the what inside our our my update what my update uh my update what my update uh logic so we have my update do you have also create i think my update is done that does all of them okay so i put it there so if i come here to api i will have a post for my update one day i think here so all the logic we put it there so by doing like this you will have even added the logic of uploading images into your project dynamically so let's go ahead and try this now so in our product category our product category this one so you can see our image is being saved under images here okay so let's go ahead and copy this image so we come back now to our create product category and then add the image i mean sorry we add the file so i'll come here and change this one to file so the file should always have the name called photo so i'll go ahead and add the photo now let's 
go ahead and select the photo from our system let me say this one i add that photo then one more thing that we must add a normal a more thing is now where should this photo be saved on the database something that we're going to save here in the what in the temp file field okay so i'll come here temp file field so this photo should be saved in the in the field called image like this so by doing like this you'll have added the logic of image uploading in your what in your dynamic uh dynamic photo you see let me push down here and just understand i hope you can see that okay i hope you can see that so this will tell where this image should be saved this one is where just we are uploading the image okay so let's go ahead and send so let's see you see everything is successful and you can see in our image the photo has been added there you see so if i come here to our logic i mean you come here and refresh so can you see this latest product where the latest product product number five you can see the image has been added there you see that is so beautiful so you will not need to worry again how to upload image or how to do what you just do it only one time only one time and you can upload as many images as you want okay so you can also write the logic of maybe uploading maybe multiple images something like that but for now one field one form one one image so this will be, is going to work on the rest of the what of the system all right let's finish the edit and then we call it a day i mean we we, we, we go to another lecture so uh this was create so edit is going to just look like what like creating only that we shall need to specify the id so come here to edit so i'll come here to body okay so i'll go ahead and specify the id so i'll just simply we shall just simply add the id so let me come here to create and come to our form okay our form and then come here and make it bulk edit okay let me copy everything in this form and then come i can put it back here uh so make sure that the image is <laughs> remaining otherwise it will be removed okay if you want to keep it there all right so i've copied that i'll come here to edit so i'll come here to bulk and change this one and put there uh-huh so i can switch back okay i can switch back so the only thing that you have to add here to make it an edit field i can just simply put id and i put the for example the id of something that's already existing which is five and then i also make sure that i put the correct endpoint so I'll come here copy this endpoint and come and put it here so that is the what the logic of updating so let me come here to image field should be image and then i go ahead and uh, change this one to file and see if the file can be also edited so let's go ahead and upload and attach there some file let me pick this one and then let me submit so when i submit uh what are they saying incorrect incorrect what value for column reorder level okay okay so reorder level oh you can see here in reorder level is where we put the file that is so that's so crazy the order level is supposed to be an integer something like this the file was supposed to come here so it's going to be just text and then the file is supposed to come here yeah all right i think now everything should be all right um okay so the order level maybe 12 so you see everything is okay i can remove this image field like this okay Temp oh sorry 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 this one is supposed to have the name of the image it's going to be let me remove this one's going to be text and then the name where the image should be saved is image then one more field called photo which is going now to be the image itself like this yep i think now that's okay 
I think that's no okay. Okay. And then one more important thing is to put the ID to make sure that it's editing. So submit. You see, uploaded it sucks successfully. And then you can see here it has been updated. So this is the new file for number five. So if I come here and refresh, so okay. Was it? Update successfully. It's a new file. Yeah, you can see the new file name is there. So everything is all right. Okay, everything is all right. So if I come and refresh here, you can see that's the new file that has been uploaded. Okay, so uh, it means that even the edit is what is working. Then let's just finalize with this list. So let's just say this subcategory and then add it here like this. So when I send, you see, listed successfully, and then the list is there very well the list of subcategories so that is uh best way of how you can uh productively create your what your uh, uh dynamic api that is a very powerful technique that you can hardly get anywhere all right so i'll save and then let's uh meet in the next session